What's up, everybody? This is the Sports League Podcast. Back for another week. I'm your host, Alex Leak. We got Amanda, the co-host, on as always. Good to have you, Amanda. Always good to be here. And we got a special guest, uh, Jerry Hairston, former uh, MLB baseball player. Uh, great to have you on, Jerry. Thanks for having me, Alex and Amanda. Thanks for uh, let me be a part of your show today. Yeah, well, Absolutely. we appreciate it. So for all of our viewers who don't know, I mean, this guy played 16 seasons for the MLB, went across nine teams. I mean, he's a legacy. His dad and grandpa both played, um, won a World Series with the Yankees in 2009 before retiring in 2013, um, joined the broadcasting crew over at Sportsnet LA for the Dodgers. So we've been watching a couple of your interviews, you know, in preparation for this. Um, and, you know, it's, it's six o'clock here, but I'm a mom of two. So I was Word, I'd be a little tired, so I made sure to grab uh, your favorite energy drink to make sure I didn't. Oh, uh, I didn't get too sleepy on the show, so I mean, I'd, I'd pass one over to you if we were doing this in person. Um, so watching that interview with that story, did you get in any trouble? Did the guys give you shit after that? Like, what happened post game? Well, you know, it's amazing. I did that interview with uh, Christine Leahy uh, a few years ago. She had a show on Fox. And that was years after I had played. So mm-hmm. obviously I kept that on the wraps. I was actually with the Cubs at the time. I was a Okay. okay. Well, you said you were in San Francisco and I was like, he didn't say what team he was playing for. Yeah. So you're, you're was, with my boys. I like it. I was playing for the Cubs at the time. I, I came in on a double switch. Uh, it was a day game in San Francisco. I was a little tired. Well, man, why am I so tired? So, I, you know, when the club was on the second, third inning day game, I said, I, I need to get some type of energy drink. Uh, I didn't really want coffee at the time, so I went in. And there were a couple other energy drinks in, in there that I was familiar with. But when I saw Mike's Hard Lemonade, I, was like, <laughs> I like lemonade. You know what I'm <laughs> and it's hard, so I'm, I'm looking for a kick. Uh, and then I got called in. You know, Dusty Baker, you know, who was the manager at the time, said, hey, you're in. You're going in double switch. Uh, I, I had two hits that, that, that day, went two for two. Uh, and I told Derek Lee, my teammate, I said, brother, I, I, I'm on this energy drink, man. This tastes good. And I felt great during the game. He like literally punched me. He's like, bro, that's not an energy drink. <laughs> that's <alcohol." laughs> that's so, amazing. Uh, that's awesome. Mike's hard lemonade. I should have probably said it back then. They would have so- sent me a boatload as an active player. Oh, but, yeah. uh, I think I've been retired. Uh, I told that story about three or four years ago. So I had been retired. So. Oh, that's funny. I'm glad it was while you were a Cub. Um, I mean, so that's that's a great story. Some uh, some sideline insight for us Cubs fans. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jerry, I mean, it's really cool. You're uh, one of three families in MLB history to have three generations of players uh, in the league. Um, the first African American family to be third generation. How special is that to you and your family? To to think back on and think about like history wise baseball royalty. Well, you know, it, it is very special to our family uh, to be the first black family to do so. Uh, yeah. but, you know, I want to miss, I want to make, make sure I mention the Boones and the Bells, you know, I'm really good friends with Brett and Aaron Boone and that family as well. I know my dad had a really good relationship with uh, Buddy Bell. Uh, I know Gus Bell too. So that family, all three families just love the game of baseball uh, it started with my grandfather, Sam. He played in the Negro Leagues uh, for many, many years. Uh, was a triple crown runner there in the Negro Leagues and was the first black player, black American player, to play for the Chicago White Sox. Damn. Uh, and then became a, a, a scout and coach for many years. And then my Uncle John played briefly for the Cubs. Uh, he had a really bad knee injury as a catcher back then. He really didn't have the type of surgeries that, that they, they have now. And he could have played a whole lot longer but unfortunately uh couldn't continue his career and then my dad and then my brother scott who came behind me so uh we're very fortunate you know we were we weren't uh as talented obviously as the as the griffies and and the bonds but you know we love the game of baseball and uh, the game of baseball has been uh very very kind to our family yeah and to do it for as many years as you guys have all done it, you know, over 10 years, everybody. It's very cool. And then on top of that, you and your brother got to play in the, I believe it was the 2009 baseball, World Baseball Classic and represent Mexico. How special was that for you as well? Well, it was extremely special because, you know, 
first and foremost, we got a chance to represent my mom's native land of, of Mexico. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I'm, my dad's uh, black and my mom's Mexican. So uh, me and Scott are, are Blacksican. We're very mm-hmm. proud uh, people. You know, Devin Booker is also a Blacksican. You know, if anybody, any NBA fans out there. Okay. Uh, so we're we're uh, we're we're very proud people. So to get a chance to 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 represent Mexico, uh, we're very proud of our heritage. My mom was ecstatic, um, and we were too. And Scott is four years younger than I am, so we okay. never got a chance to play together in little league in high school. So that was the first time sharing the field as teammates uh, with my brother Scott. Wow. You know, so that was cool. Uh, so we got a chance to play together. The very first game, it was an exhibition game. I think it was against the Diamondbacks. We both homered in that game, wow. which was really, really cool. It was mm-hmm. really cool. So uh, playing with brother Scott, and then later we ended up being teammates with San Diego the very next year. That definitely was uh, really cool for not only myself and my, my brother, but our entire family. So I'm cool. one of six kids. So sibling rivalry, always a thing. Um, how was it with your, you know, baby brother coming into the leagues? Like how many games did you guys play against each other? Like, was it, was it good natured fun? Were you guys ragging on each other before the games? How, I, I, will, I would love some insight on how that went behind the scenes. Well, when first, when, when Scott first got to the big leagues, uh, he was with Arizona and I was on the East coast. So he was on the West coast. I was on the East coast. We we're in two different leagues. So we didn't get a chance to play against each other an awful lot. Uh, we never had that civil, sibling rivalry because he was like the baby brother, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so we never had that. Now, what, what Scott did do, every time I would practice, Scott would always follow me. You know, he always want to work out with me, always want to practice. Mm-hmm. Um, we played strikeout, you know, up against the garage when we were younger. And, you know, he really had that desire, even at, at a young age, to do exactly what our father did and our grandfather did. So... Uh, so there wasn't really a rivalry. I, I would say this. I remember when he was uh, with the D-backs or with the Padres, you know, when he first got called up, he would send me a, a text message or vice versa. You know, if, if I went deep or he went deep, you know, we'd say, hey, heads up. You know, I just I just hit a ball that hasn't landed yet. So make sure you look up in the sky. You know, <laughs> if you're on the East Coast, it may be landing or on the East Coast, it might be landing over your head. So he, it'd be, it'd be kind of cool to, to to get those texts from from him. Your, your little brother. That's awesome. Um, what was it like to play for the New York Yankees and, and win the 2009 World Series, playing with legends like Derek Jeter and Alex Rodriguez and Mariano Rivera? Well, it was extremely special. Um, I was with the Cincinnati Reds at the time. You know, I was playing just about every day, and I started to play every day again on that team, and I didn't want to leave that team. Uh, yeah. I had heard rumors that I was going to get traded to, to Minnesota. Uh, they needed a shortstop. And, you know, I wanted to stay with, with Cincinnati because they had, they had an up and, up and coming team, a young team that Brandon Phillips, who was already a star. They had a guy named Joey Votto, who was huh? starting to become a, a, a star. I knew he was going to be a superstar. Jay Bruce. Uh, so many young guys. Um, Edison Volquez, Johnny Cueto. So I knew what they were, where they were headed in a very short period of time. So I didn't want to leave that. But when the trade deadline came, Dusty Baker called me in his office. He said, Hey man, the Yankees traded for you. That was a surprise. I didn't hear the Yankees. I'd heard other clubs. Uh, at the time, the Yankees were the, were the best team in baseball record wise. Um, I had known Derek Jeter a little bit playing against him for many years in the, uh, in the East coast with the Orioles. He was the Yankees. So we had the same agent. Uh, when I got over there, I met them in Chicago. They were, we were playing the White Sox. The first guy I saw in the clubhouse, the visiting clubhouse, was Mariano Rivera. And he came up to me, and he said, hey, welcome home. That's the first thing he said to me, welcome home. That's cool. And it was really cool to be a part of that team. Obviously, they were already winning. I just wanted to make sure I didn't you know, ruffle any feathers. I get in where I fit in. Uh, they treated me like I was <laughs> there from the start of the season. You know, from Derek to Alex to Johnny Damon, Eric Kinski, who I, I've known for, for years. We actually grew up playing against each other. He was from Wisconsin. I was from uh, the Chicago area. Uh, it was a, a great team filled with superstars, but they didn't act like that. You know, they didn't, they didn't, they knew that not one guy or an, an, a group of guys was a part of the, was was separated from the team. Everybody was 
uh, had their own uniqueness and we needed each other to win a championship. And it was one of the close knit groups that I've been around uh, and we were able to win. We beat a really good Philadelphia Phillies team who had just won the year before with J-Roll and Chase Sutley, Ryan Howard. Uh, and we were able to, to beat them in six games in, in Yankee Stadium and uh, to christen the new Yankee Stadium. That, that was pretty cool. That's awesome. And, yeah, you think about that rich tradition, that rich history of winning with the Yankees, and to think that that, in 2009, that's their last World Series. How can you – why do you think it's been so long for them? Well, I think it's a, a couple things. You know, anytime you have a, a team that has Derek Jeter, Mariano Rivera, Jorge Posada, Andy Pettit, they call it the core mm-hmm. four, that's a special group. That, that doesn't come around very often, you know. Mm-hmm. And then when you have guys like Mark Teixeira, Alex Rodriguez, um, you know, and, and so many guys, Malcolm Cabrera, Brett Gardner, and then you have the bench that we had along with the pitching staff with CeCe Sabathia, that was a special team, man. Um, and, you know, it, it was a, a tough team to beat that season. So I've always said this, winning is extremely hard. That's why yeah. you celebrate when, when you yeah. do win. You know, and I think the Yankee fans really cherish those years because they realize, man, that was a special mm-hmm. time period. And it, it's so hard to win. You know, it's so hard to not only draft well, like they drafted Derek Jeter, uh, Jorge Posada signed Mariana Rivera, uh, drafted Andy Pettit. It's so hard to hit on stars, but but not only stars, but stars that play together and win. Yeah. You know? So a lot of clubs have, have struggled with that. And the Yankees, obviously, in the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, and obviously in 09, were able to kind of lock it in and win all those rings. Yeah. Yeah, it was definitely in a, a very elite combination of players and it was it was fun to watch them back then um so you've talked a little bit about that trade um back in 2005 a few days before my 15th birthday the cubs gave me a, a real traumatic birthday present and traded away sammy sosa so you were uh-huh. that day, deal you and fontenot he was one of my favorites um talk to me a little bit about how that trade went like you coming in like as sammy sosa's leaving i'm sure like you would have preferred to play with sammy um, instead of coming in as he left. Well, a lot of people don't know this, but I've known Sammy since I was a teenager. Oh, cool. Uh, okay. Sosa, uh, you know, my dad worked for the White Sox for many years, and Sammy was with the White Sox you know, in, um, I think it was late 80s, early 90s, uh, before he got traded away. He got traded from the Texas Rangers to the White Sox um, for Harold Banks, my favorite player growing up, mm-hmm. besides my dad. You know, right. so when we got Sammy Sosa. I was like, all right, who's this young guy? He was fast. He had power. He had all the tools to be a star. Um, but then, obviously, he get tra- traded to the Cubs. He becomes the Sammy Sosa. So when I got traded, ironically, a couple days before, the GM at the time told me I wasn't going to trade. There was rumors that I was going to get traded, but they wanted me to be the starting center fielder for the Orioles. I, be- I-, I came up as an infielder, but Brian Roberts really started to come along. And they wanted me and Brian to be, you know, a one-two punch. Brian would lead off. I'd hit second. Brian would play second base. I would play center field. And I said, I was fine with that. I, I love center field. I- I'm cool with that. He goes, all right, you're not getting traded. Two days later, I get traded for Sammy Sosa. I was like, <laughs> I thought I wasn't getting traded. But you know what? I understand it's a business. You know, things happen. Uh, when I did get traded to Chicago, uh, that day, that day I got traded also was the day I found out uh, I was going to be a father. My wife at the time told me, hey, I'm also pregnant, you know. Uh, so it was a, a whirlwind of emotions. Uh, and But it, it was a great day. I loved playing in Chicago. I wish I would have had an opportunity to be healthy the second year. Yeah. I'd find out a little later I, I was hurt pretty bad, injured. Um, but it just didn't happen that way. But I, I loved my time in Chicago. Sammy was an incredible guy. We, we became teammates in, in 2007. Uh, with the Rangers when he when he hit uh, homer number 600, 600 as as a Ranger. Uh, it was a special moment for Sammy and, and his teammates at the time. Sammy was a great teammate, still a friend of mine. Me and Sammy still keep in touch. If I ever head, head, head to Miami, I hit up Sammy, see yeah. how he's doing. Nice. Uh, but Sammy having an incredible life. I hope Chicago one day brings him back uh, to honor him because he did so many special things in a Cub uniform. 
Yeah. yeah. So it's, I mean, you got to go back to where you went to high school to have your first kid, right? So that's, that yeah. kind of worked out. That worked out. It worked out great. It did. Um, and then you played for the Texas Rangers briefly. How did you feel about the Rangers just recently here in 2023 getting their first ever World Series championship? I was happy for Texas. You know, you know, obviously the Cowboys and rightfully so get a lot of love up there in Dallas, but a lot of fans there are cheer for the Rangers. It's mm-hmm. a huge fan base. Uh, they love their Texas Rangers. So I was happy for Michael Young. He's assistant to the GM there, Chris Young, who's done an incredible job. Uh, that owner has been extremely aggressive, and I think he's going to continue to be aggressive uh, with that uh, new ballpark. Uh, they got talented team, young team, uh, led by Corey Seager, who was a teammate of mine. I can still say that. Me and Corey Seager were teammates briefly when I went down on a rehab assignment <laughs> when he was 19 years old. Hey, it still counts. It still yeah. counts. So I tell Corey, you're my old teammate. So uh, I'm really happy for Corey. He's an incredible Incredible guy, incredible team, a uh, uh, team player, and obviously clutch. Uh, he led that team to World Series, so I was happy for the Rangers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just, it was super fun to watch him, um, you know, pull that off. But that was the least watched World Series in history. What do you think was missing yeah. from that matchup to draw viewers? Because it was so well, quiet. It, it was a little different. You got to remember, there are two teams. Let's say the Texas Rangers, who do have a, a huge fan base, but. If you're if you're playing against teams, let's say the Texas Rangers playing against uh, a couple American League teams that you want to see make it to the World Series, let's say, like it or not, a lot of teams hate the Houston Astros, right? But a lot of teams like to hate on the Houston Astros as far as watching them lose. So yeah. then that was their World Series. The teams that hated Houston, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Watching the Rangers beat the Astros. And on the flip side, I live in Arizona. Uh, this is not a knock on the D-backs fans. There are a lot of D-backs fans there. But everybody knows if you live in Arizona, there's a lot of people that are from Chicago that live in Arizona, including myself. There yeah. are Cub fans. That A lot of people from Arizona are from California. There are huge Dodger fans. So a lot of people that are in Arizona already have their teams. They're either yeah. Dodger fans or Cub fans. So uh, I, I know the viewership wasn't uh, – to teams, or I should say Major League Baseball's liking. But as a whole, the popularity of baseball is has been through the roof. It's never been popular. Um, I think attendance, somebody said, is up 10% this year than in previous years. So people are coming to the games. I think now with so many teams stealing bases, with the new rule changes, uh, it's an up-tempo style. And I think it's uh, fits the new generation of kids, they love seeing the base stealing. They love seeing action. So I think in the next several years, you're going to see an uptick in viewership. Uh, but, you know, it, it, you always want teams to be new in as far as the D-backs and the Texas Rangers. But at the same time, just like the NBA, just like the NFL, they would prefer the big market teams. Don't you think the NFL wants to see the Cowboys and – let's say the, the Chiefs in, in a Super Bowl or the yeah. NBA would love for the Lakers to be in uh, against, let's say, the Boston Celtics, L.A. Right. versus Boston or the, or the Knicks because they're, they're big markets. So uh, if when the big markets aren't in it, you're, there's going to be a, a hit every once in a while. Well, I yeah. mean, speaking of the Lakers, Alex had kind of, you know, we talked a little bit about you before the show. Um, do you think LeBron can win another championship? I think they will. Uh, um, you know, it, it's amazing. LeBron is top five player of all time. He, he's an incredible player. He's he's done so much to make sure his body uh, yeah. is in peak performance or, or as much as it can be. Now, he's not a high flyer like he was when he was 25 years old. Uh, so he's not that Lamborghini anymore, but he's that Mercedes, man. He's that Rolls Royce. That, those mm-hmm. are still great cars to have. And he's still playing at a high level, but make no mistake about it. Anthony Davis, who gets knocked on all the time, it's his defense that makes the Lakers. Yeah. Uh, so Anthony Davis is the best player, best two-way player on the team. If he's not in, the, in that lineup, the Lakers are, are, aren't a very good team. Uh, so Lake, make no mistake, Anthony Davis is the leader of that team, He meaning as far as anchoring the defense. 
this the vocal leader without question is LeBron James, and, and rightfully so. So I think uh, the Lakers had a golden opportunity last year. I thought they should have beat Denver if they had a closer. You know, all four games. I know they like. I know they got swept, but if they had a closer, I thought I think they could have beat the Denver Nuggets. You know, Jokic and Murray were the ones closing out those games. But if if they would have had a closer, I think they would have gave Denver a run for their money. If they get past Denver, I think they win the win the uh, the NBA Finals. But it didn't happen. But I think this year, uh, I think they'll need another move. Uh, that's why they've been clamoring. You know, last couple of years to get a closer like a Kyrie Irving. Uh, but maybe they go out and make a move to get a closer that kind of close out the, the games in the fourth quarter. If they do that, they'll, 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 I think they'll get past Denver. And speaking of LeBron playing, you know, 20 plus years and staying in great physical shape. And uh, in my opinion, chasing the ghost, right. That came from Chicago. Me and you agree. We talk about it. We go back and forth on Twitter about Michael Jordan being the goat. And I've seen you before say, that uh, you don't think it's close, like Michael Jordan's the go, no debate about it. I agree. Um, you know, to me, it's all about winning, right? And so my one and two, it goes Michael Jordan, Bill Russell, like win championships. That's the name of the game. I, I, I'm not going to disagree with that. I think it's a combination of a lot of things. It's not only winning, but it's mm -hmm. how, how you're winning. Now, Bill Russell won all those rings. There's, he is unbelievable. You can make a case he's the best center to ever play the game. Some say Wilt, some say Sha Shaq, some say yeah. Team Olajuwon. I don't just say championships. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. um, now, Michael Jordan is the best player I ever seen. I'm not even talking about the championships, just player. And I think LeBron James is, is incredible. He is an incredible talent. Um, I don't think he's a better player than Kobe Bryant. Now, uh, yeah, again, that's not knocking LeBron. It's mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant, man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Kobe Bryant was yeah. a mom. You know? <laughs> so when you get to Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was the best offensive player I've ever seen. And you can make a case that Michael Jordan is arguably, from the wing standpoint, the greatest defensive wing the, the game yes. has ever seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not just the championships. Michael Jordan had 10 scoring titles in a league that was – a pretty physical league for a guard to win all those scoring titles when you had so many centers knocking on knocking you on your butt uh, and they weren't even flagrant fouls. Now the game is so open. So guys can play now. Steph Curry's gonna play to his 40. He didn't have to worry about going down the lane and getting getting his teeth knocked out like Isaiah Thomas did. Yeah. And it's not physical anymore. So guys can play longer to 40, 42, 43 years old, you know, because it's not a physical game anymore. You know, so again, when I defend Michael Jordan, it's not it's not a knock on LeBron James. It's just, you know, I think he's no longer chasing Michael Jordan. You know, I think LeBron's legacy is already cemented, you know, as top five player of all time. Yeah. As far as chasing Michael Jordan, that ended in 2009, then in 2010, and it ended in 2011. Yeah. You know, he lost to Dwight Howard in the Magic when they were <laughs> big. He yeah. lost to old, old, Celtics team. They were upset by the Celtics. They're old, yeah. you know, and they had a 61 and 66 uh, win Cavs team. They should have went to the finals. They were the best team in the East and they got upset. And then you leave Cleveland, which he had every right to do. He's a free agent. He had every right to do that. Okay. If he wants to leave, cool. But when you leave and team up with Dwayne Wayne, a former finals MVP, yeah. and you admit I went there to learn how to win under Dwayne Wade, under Pat Riley, along yep. with Chris Bosh, which they should have ran off five straight championships. With yeah. that team, they should have won five straight. Even you four straight. Yeah. yeah. Even. You lose to Dirk Nowitzki, yeah. who was the only all-star on that team. Yeah. Or you promised them they win seven or eight championships in that parade they had. I think that that was the end of it, and, then, and not only that, the way he performed, and, and LeBron admitted, it. he LeBron said it himself, he did not show up yeah. in 2011. So that three-year stretch destroyed his go case. Now, is he still top five? Is he still awesome? Is he still a freight train when he goes to the basket? Absolutely. Yeah. Fun to watch. He was 
when he was with the Cavs, when he was with the Miami Heat, when he was flying, you know, doing all those alley oops, incredible athlete. But that three year stretch, and then in 2014, losing to that old Spurs team, that can't happen, man. Come on. Yeah. Tim Duncan was 68 years old. <laughs> you know and like, and, and Kawhi Lawson, was like 18. 18. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I was like, come on, man. You know, yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, he's an incredible player. I, I, people think I hate on him. I'm not hating on him. I think when you call yourself the GOAT, when you say you're the greatest of all time, and, and in my humble opinion, disrespecting Kareem yeah. Abdul Bar saying that, yeah. disrespect Magic Johnson, yeah. disrespect Kobe Bryant by calling yourself that, and you put that on video with 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 no other NBA players, he was with with his boys. I think when he did that, now it, it opened it up for him to be, you know, scrutinized more. You yeah. know, so he put that out there. So now people can kind of nitpick a little bit. And you know, it's unfortunate because he, he's an incredible player. I agree hundred percent. Great answer on that. Amanda, let's get him out of here on uh talking about uh your your sports agency, right? Culture thirty nine. Yes. Culture 39, uh, it represents uh, baseball players. Uh, we also uh, started Sports and Image. Uh, it represents uh, college football, eventually college basketball players, uh, and it's more of the, on the entertainment side. Uh, my cousin Charles Harrison does an incredible job uh, running that, uh, both agencies, and we've had other guys come in to help us out. But we started with Culture 39. It was a baseball agency. My, like I said, my cousin Charles runs it, does an incredible job. We have guys. Uh, now we started out small. And now we had a couple guys get to the big leagues the last couple of years. It's been fun to see guys develop. Uh, it's a boutique agency. We wanted it that way because we wanted to have a hands-on approach with each and every one of our clients. So mm -hmm. they are not overlooked. You know, there are great agencies out other agencies that are really good. They, they're huge. They do a good job for their clients. But we want to make sure that we keep it relatively small enough that we have that personal touch with our clients. And uh, we've started to branch out a little bit more with uh, football and, and basketball. Uh, but we started out as a baseball agency, yes. I love that. I went to school for PR. And it's really important when the clients feel like they're actually being serviced and taken care of because you get too big and people start falling off. And I've seen a lot of disputes and issues about that, stuff like that. But I mean, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was great to meet you and to to talk sports with you. Anytime. Really appreciate you guys' time. And uh, I love that Cubs hat. It's really cool. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> you, you missed uh, this guy up here. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> all right well appreciate everyone for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe leave a comment uh thank you again jerry great interview and uh we'll keep uh keep on putting out content appreciate it and have a great week guys peace out